Welcome back. So we're starting the newspaper review with the punch. China to fund PH, Medugri, Abuja, Kanu Rails. That's Port Harcourt. Anti-graft war should start from National Assembly, EFCC chair. Akbabu meets Tinubu, dismisses crisis in Senate. NLC retires. Retirees lament as 26 states fail to join scheme. Lagos, five others in full compliance. Contributory pension scheme inevitable, says Pencom. Withholding pension immoral, says NLC. Retirement now death sentence. Retires, retirees kick. Gaza hospital attack sparks protest. Biden Israel blame terror group. Undo assembly ask Ayeda Tiwa to withdraw suits. Extortion. Please remove DPO. Try others after punch report. Alafi, EFCC quizzes or your kingmakers over bribery allegations. What stories do we have in the punch? Okay, I have the major headline. <coughs> Go ahead. Punch. Um, so NLC followed this um, um, article, sorry, investigation into the pension um, contribution scheme and found out that about 26 states of the Federation have not bothered to do the needful. Mm. Over 19 years since the contributory pension scheme started, only six states, that's Lagos, Ekiti, um, Ondo, um, Oshon, have fully uh, signed up, complied with the contributory pension scheme. So it's only those states, Lagos, Oshun, Kaduna, Ekiti, Edo, and Ondo, that are fully signed up under the contributory pension scheme. Wow. Other states are partially, uh, continuously extending it. They've not fully signed up. God save you know, when I read it that they had fully signed up. You would have finished <laughs> them today. I would have sat on I the trust you. States who have not fully signed up have issues with pension, of yeah. course. Mm. Where the 18%, which is supposed to go, 10, 10 and 8%, totally 18%, would be put into a, a scheme where the pensioners do not have to go I'm through the out. drama that we saw across the uh, states, but they still haven't signed up. Bayelsa are not, is not implementing Kogi, Abia, Taraba, Imo, Sokoto, Eboyi, Nasarawa, they are not implementing at all. Hmm. What that says are partially. Um, River said they extended their transition into the contribution pension scheme. They are still taking time. Um, Ogu, Niger State also said they have extended the transition. Other states are not, Adama, Zamfara, and Gobe, they are not, they are not near at all. Hmm. And of course, we'll see, you know, the, 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 the contribution pension scheme was a solution to the pension hmm. issues. Ordinarily, it uh, used to be that the federal government, all the state government where the people, where uh, civil servants worked, just created a pension and give them. Mm. But when that started to fail, people would retire, they would be waiting for pension on end, they won't get anything. The government decided to sign and create this. 19 years into it now, we are here. We're still talking that just a few states, states have. thinking oh. about it. But, you know, if it was something else, everybody might be sharp. We know funding is an issue. Remove this percentage and take care of people when they are no longer as active as they were when they want when they were working. Help us. It's important. Thanks. Yes. Why that's hard. So I have the Lagos State Commission of Police, Ido Owohua, has ordered the removal of the DPO in charge of Meron Police Station, Tony Abutu. Um, this is over an alleged extortion. So the story is that um, there's this phone dealer, Ibrahim Salu, and um, he was detained and was extorted of 200,000 200, naira. They said that they had, got, they had um, arrested his brother, uh, Olaya Murtala, for not providing an identity card or receipts for the iPhone, the iPhones that they found in him. These are sellers of iPhones. So mm. when they caught him, they were like, where is your ID? And <coughs> they didn't get it, they detained them, and then insisted that they pay, pay 500,000 naira if they wanted to be released. They negotiated and they got to 200,000. He had given them 20,000 Naira cash on him, and then they took him to an, a POS operator mm. where he withdrew 180,000 Naira and handed it to him. And then, of course, he talked about it on Twitter, and that was when you know, the police uh, commissioner got involved, and we were told that uh, um, they've ordered his removal, and then all the other officers also who were part of this mm. will be <coughs> facing what they yeah. call um, orderly room trial. That yeah. that has we'll break it down because well. that's uh, one of our hot topics this yeah. morning. Top right so here. the Senate had a little drama on. Um, I think it was the, a dr drama happened within the Senate where Senator Ali Dume stormed out. What caused it was the Senator Ali Dume felt that there was a mistake that was made by the Senate President in that. 
usually there's a you no know, they are supposed to be processes mm -hmm. and in that process mm -hmm. it didn't follow the right process it didn't call out the name of a particular uh, motion before they reopened it they deliberated on it and it came to his attention he now asked the senate president that okay there is a point of order I mean, order rule 51, which should be followed. And if we don't follow, you can go back and mm -hmm. correct the error. And while he was making that statement that the Senate president should correct his error, the Senate president ruled him out of order. Quoted the Constitution. No, um, they, were no, no. they were ruling on the same they order, were, yes. uh, 54. Yes. He had called that order, and the Senate president felt he did not use, that order doesn't cover what he, what he was saying. He, was yeah. yeah. he so. ruled against him. He tried to get up again twice. And he ruled again. So yeah. he just, the guy just excused himself. But he said he, went he to carried his document and went out. Now, mm -hmm. based on this and a few other things we've been hearing about the accusation against any president, that there are some things going wrong within the house, mm -hmm. the president said the president went to visit our president. And he had a conversation with the president and said that, see, then this is politics. In the hallowed chambers, we will disagree. We will agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. So this is not a permanent... Well, there's no hatred in politics, mm -hmm. it's permanent interest. We will resolve it that, they should, that the president should not worry. They will never get to the point of throwing cheers. I was happy to hear that, <laughs> yeah, that there are more mature people nah. in hopefully, the House of Assembly now, I, I and agree. that we will not have to throw cheers. Because they've been there before. I want to really resolve. This mm -hmm. issue was resolved when he stepped out. Um, Senator Poyemi moved the motion for closed uh, session, and the closed session. He came back in, and we did not hear how the matter set to. Uh, there, was, no there were no throwing mm -hmm. of chairs. So residents of the Para community in Okearu, area of Ogun State, are expressing concerns over the danger of the dump site located in the area, and what is the you know hazard is posing to their health. So their punch correspondents visited the area on Monday, and observed that the dump site is located by a canal beside the filling station along the major road. And they said the heap of refuse was already as high as a two-story building, wow. almost touching the power line that runs across the community. There's a, the stench is oozing from the place. Mm -hmm. But they said there are some scavengers who had already uh, set up makeshift homes living around those areas. So the community leader, Sam Badamusi, you know, spoke to the correspondents and um, said that the residents have been enduring this for the past 20 years. Mm. He's been there for a long time. And, uh, you know, they started facing the issue even before he became a ballet. And he's appealing to the government to come and remove the dump site or relocate it. A lot of the residents there are relocating because of this. They said their children are not able to come and visit them. And when the sun is too hot, after a while, the dump site catches fire. You know, mm -hmm. fire just yeah. erupts. Yeah. Yes, it, it, does, it does that. And they're asking that government comes to their aid to do something before it becomes an epidemic in that area. It's just a painful one. All right, let's move on now to the vanguard. Naira hits new low, 1060 to a dollar, as uh, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria kicks against policy reversal. NMPCL appoints Sone Shoneye, Chief Communication Officer. Can JNI disagree with Baba Che for label labeling APC Islamic Party? Naira depreciation forces insurance firms to flout local content law. Nollywood actor Mr. Ibu seeks assistance over health challenge. Contracts, procurements, frauds cost Nigeria 2.9 trillion in three years. Government kill 15, kidnap 14 in Benue, Zamfara, Nasarawa, Lagos. Wiki extends deadline for mosques and churches. Lekki at Bear Road reconstruction. Residents commuters lament harrowing experiences. What stories do we have in we have the, the vanguard? Like, yeah. So yesterday was the confirmation of the new chairperson of the EFCC, <coughs> uh, Mr. Olao Luka Koyede, and his confirmation ha happened along with that of the secretary of the anti-gravity agency as well, Mohammed Amajoda. And during the session, he was talking about how <coughs> taxpayers, 2.9 trillion in just two years went to due to contract and procurement for the loan. And he said this money between 2018 and 2020, that amount of money could have built 1,000 kilometers of road. Mm. But that's what we had to suffer because of that. Or you could have even built 200 standard tertiary institutions. That amount could also, you know, educate about 6,000 children, according to him. And then he was asked how he would, you know, carry out his duties without fear or favor. He says, as he is now, he can <coughs> investigate even the Senate president. Mm. But he promises not to abuse power. He promises to carry out his duties as transparently, unbiased as possible, as fairly as possible, and that if he, he, he wants Nigeria to end the reputation for transparency and accountability, there must be collective 
decision that you know will end corruption and is willing mm. to fight that. It was a nice one. I like what he you said. Know, he get... said, if we create an atmosphere that makes sure that people have a choice, that they can say, if I don't steal, I can afford to train my children to school mm -hmm. with good standard. If I don't steal money, I can buy a car mm -hmm. after I've worked for five years. I don't steal money, I can still um, get a three-bedroom bungalow after mm -hmm. I've worked for 10 years. I think those are the... I like the fact that he's also addressing the fundamentals Issues. that lead yes. to... Yeah. There are eight reasons yeah. why we... Yes, and he promised to work in line with other agencies so that we will not have clashes, like, you know, some things that happen... Okay. The, the... All right, let's take a breather here. When we come back, we continue with The Vanguard. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still reviewing The Vanguard. Yes, I have here yeah, just insecurity reports across Nigeria. Um, they says in Abuja, suspected arms... Armed herdsmen and bandits yesterday reportedly murdered no fewer than 15 people in some local government areas of Benue, Zampara, Kebi, and Nasara states. Um, they also say bandits kidnapped many in the... So there's like a new spate of killings happening and kidnapping across the countries. Um, the attacks, nine people were killed, many injured when armed herdsmen invaded two local government areas of Benue state. Three persons were equally killed in Kebi State, while 11 others were kidnapped in fresh attacks. You know, I hate to read stories like this, but mm. you know, sometimes it's just good so that we understand you know, the level of insecurity that we're dealing with and that you know, our fellow brothers and sisters across um, the country, you know, these are the things that they are facing, fa their families and loved ones are facing. Um, nine, nine killed, many injured in Benue State. This is seem more likely like a headsman, headsman band, um, clash, clash, as we know that it's a major um, agrarian community. So many of the communities, the bandits came in late at night, you know, and attacked these communities. Few, many were, a few were killed and so many have also been taken to hospital. Um, in Lagos State too, there's a story of um, kidnap of um, a few, a, a couple of people at um, Ago Palace area. So these are, you know, the stories. In Benue State, the governor has condemned it and he has assured that he will not rest until these killings mm. have been brought to an end in his state and across, you know, um, the police officers, the security um, structure is also trying as much as they can to, you know, fight this. Yeah, so uh, motorists, residents, business operators, uh, commuters along, along the um, Lekki Ekbe Expressway yesterday said they are going through uh, horrible, harrowing experiences because of the excruciating pain you go through uh, because of that traffic. They said the ongoing construction is causing a lot of traffic and that is happening to the 49.5 kilometer expressway. There's construction going on. There were also unconfirmed reports saying that some uh, persons have died in that road because of this construction. They said that's um, Majek, Abidjo, Ugidon, Sangote Edo, uh, because I don't know how that happened, but it was unconfirmed. They also mentioned that uh, a woman was in labor who practically put to bed uh, put to bed on that same road and many school children have stopped school this one i know firsthand because my kids have been home since they can't even make it to school because of that traffic now the residents lamenting are saying that one of the um, issues they realize is the fact that the people uh, the construction company does not start till 10 a.m and they close by 4 p.m they are supposed to be working overnight so that they work fast so the slow pace is what is really causing this and the fact also that they do not create a path for motorists so everywhere is practically blocked mm. and you know we have a driver staying there for hours school buses there you know people going about their businesses they are now spending the uh, bus drivers are now collecting double the prices and then you won't still get there some persons now have decided to be trekking to their destination it's at really that bad. time yeah it's, it's really really, really bad. bad so the they need to work the fast said that they are working but i think that the no i think there was also an feedback. incident from last week yeah, remember last when week, they said yeah. the card no, but but is it better i'm just wondering is it better it's not better my kids have been home the Very road so. the road that is left for all motorists to pass is it's bad. very small yeah and bad it's, it's small and bad it's so they are fixing one now. Then the other one that is also available is it's bad. And when it rainy season, so mm -hmm. once it rains, it becomes flooded and you yes. can't see. What's the water we are? We don't have, we can't mm. go by boats. No, 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 to that no, access, no, no. no we don't can't. have helicopters. Same <laughs> problem across. Please, I need to take a take wiki a story. story. Okay. Um, the mm. Abuja, um, wiki, uh, the FCT minister has had a meeting with um, <laughs> some Muslim clerics concerning the three month ultimatum they had given to people. The, last month, he issued the Three months ultimatum saying that people should either develop their land or the allocation will be revoked so the meeting had 
um, a few Muslim clerics come to meet him to say that the timeline is given to them cannot work, that they should know that being a religious organization, they cannot be, they, they, they rely on donations from people. And you cannot tell people that, oh, you need to give us this money within three months for us to develop um, the mosque. So he said, he's not, he's, not, he's not particular against any person. It's not a policy against any individual, that it is for the landscape. These are places that are within the central Abuja and they want it, the places developed because people were saying that it was also with hunting some specific people. He said, okay, <coughs> just so that you know that I'm not attacking any particular person. Mm. Um, when, they come, when you come to discuss with me like this, I'm a reasonable person. We would extend it for all religious bodies mm. because we know that they are dependent on donations to be able to do construction. So they would not... It won't be terminated at the end of this year, which was the three months when the three months would expire. But for private um, individuals, they will still have to meet up to that timeline. The visit also um, mentioned the fact that the cent national cent central must need to be rehabilitated. Okay. It was already ongoing before change of administration, but as usual, when change of administration takes place, projects usually stop. So they are asking the FT minister that he should please help to continue. Re um, rehabilitation of the national um, mosque in Abuja yeah. because it has been designated as um, the her uh, heritage of the country. I don't, I, I didn't get the word right, but mm. all right. Our final paper it. for today: mm. the Nigerian Tribune. Let's take stories we haven't taken. Loan app: 300 level uni lowering female student commits suicide over indebtedness. Mm. China to refinance Abuja Kano Portakot Meiduguri railways for completion. CBN's policy on 43 items will collapse will collapse many industries. A Manufacturers Association of Nigeria tells federal government. 40 traders feared killed in Yobi auto accidents. What stories do we have quickly? Okay, CBN, uh, well, no, we have the vice chairman of basic metal, iron, and steel products, um, the steel product sector of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Liko Adewe. And, um, you know, they were talking on a TV um, show, he was talking about the 43 items that the CBN had <coughs> taken off the banned list, and he was talking of how it will affect the manufacturing industry in Nigeria. He says that um, that uh, he disagreed with the development and described the described it as a policy somersault. Uh, he says the news came as a surprise to manufacturers who are still struggling to stay in business. Basically, you know, in summary, he was just saying that a lot of people had invested, mm. you know, in the manufacturing in those areas. industry. And, be, and um, because of those ba um, banned um, items, you know, this policy somehow sort of affects us, whether, you know, in one way or the other. And that every time government takes policies, they just never involve them. Mm. They never it's understand the to, you know, to involve them in these conversations. He says when you banned those uh, items in the first place. You didn't talk you to didn't manufacturers. Ask us. Mm. When you took them off the banned list, you, you did not speak oh. to us. And whether we like it or not, it would affect the, it would affect employment. It would, yeah, which invariably will cause insecurity. So this has far-reaching um, impact, you know, on the economy. These are decisions that should be taken, you know, with due consideration of all the major players in the industry. Okay, this is a media story. It's, this is a really, really sad story. This 300 level uh, microbiology student in uni Loring committed suicide based on the fact that she had borrowed money from loan apps um, and she had threatened that she was going to, that she had bought sniper, she was going to drink it. And some of her friends tried to convince her that, oh, she doesn't need to do that. She should, be, she should be patient. Over time, she will pay back. But she carried out the threats. By the time the friends found her on the floor, they took her to the hospital and she was pronounced dead on arrival. The, what she borrowed from the loan app was 270,000 naira. Oh I said that she was, she, they were sending demeaning messages to all her friends, her parents, and um, different accounts of what she spent the money on. Some said she used to help her friend that was having cancer. Some other said that um, somebody scammed her, a lover scammed her. Someone said she used <sighs> betting. For whatever reason, loan apps, not, this is not the first, there are several cases the of method. suicide that are taking place based on how loan apps are enforcing it. And the CBN gave it an instruction a few months back, but that it's not been implemented. Mm. Those messages are still being sent to people and it's causing sad situations like this. Um, China, the President of the People's Republic of China has committed to refinancing <coughs> the Kadun, uh, sorry, the Abuja Kano Port Harcourt Medjugorje Railway project in Nigeria. This was okay. said on Wednesday where, where in response to President Tinubu, Tinubu's um, request that, you know, at um, the ongoing Belt Road Initiative Forum mm. in Beijing. It was represented by the Vice President mm. and the <coughs> request of Nigeria government was of course how the financing would go. The President of China recommitted to that financing, says that 
duty of paying the balance of 15 percent it is part of the funding of the session of the project as well he also talked about the um, increased investments that they'll do in nigeria's power generation and digital economy he called for the protection of chinese nationals in nigeria working here mm -hmm. he also talked about um uh, uh, you, how they will build, support and build cooperation in all fields, just as he appreciated Nigeria for the support of one China policy. Thank you, ladies. That's all we can take on the newspaper reviews. When we come back, we move on to our hot topic. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.